trying to lose weight, find out why resistance is futile when you avoid temptation, why avoidance is going to sabotage you, and why you need to file a divorce. Today on the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast, we are talking about how to avoid temptation when losing weight. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. My name is Nicole Simonin. I am so glad that you are hanging out with me today. Um, Before we dive into the topic, I just want to let you know, I have been working very diligently on the TEDx talk that I am going to be presenting uh, coming up in October. It is going to be a virtual TEDx talk for this one. And then next year, I'm already scheduled to perform on the stage for my next TEDx talk, which will be a different topic. But I'm really excited about this current one that I'm working on. It's I'm just really enjoying the process. So if you missed the last week's episode, go back and watch it and or not watch it, <laughs> go back and listen to it. And you're going to hear all about the TEDx uh, that is coming up. But this current one that's coming up in October is titled, Is Your Chair Making You Sick? Sitting with Dis-Ease. And I'm going to dive into really how sitting is really very not good for yourself. <laughs> it's, it's not good for our bodies. Our bodies were designed to move. So definitely stay tuned for information on how you can access that. I am going to leave the links in the show notes so you can check out and register for the TEDx talk um, in advance. And if you're in the local South Jersey area, next year's TEDx will be in Cape May, New Jersey, which is a lovely place to be in. Um, the TEDx will be in October. So if you're in the area and you want to check it out, register for the event, and let me know you're coming. Hopefully, maybe afterwards we can um, meet. All right, so let's dive into today's topic. Struggle is real, or is it? So if you've been following me, you know that we function from two parts of the brain. We have your primal, primal brain and your sophisticated brain. So your primal brain wants instant gratification and to keep you alive. And your sophisticated brain, which is what I like to call it, it's really your prefrontal cortex, your sophisticated brain wants you to reach your goals and to dream big. So when you're faced with temptation, like your favorite chocolate cake or potato chips, whatever your thing is, your primal brain will start to sound a little like Gollum from Lord of the Rings, right? My precious. And you are going to start ogling chocolate cake whatever your thing is. You may even start to drool and thoughts of how wonderful and great that cake tastes last time will, whether you realize it or not, start popping up in your head because your brain will go back to the last time you had that cake and how it tasted and the sensations and the feelings that you felt. And you're instantly going to get a dopamine hit before you even eat the cake. So these are primal thoughts. They're very strong thoughts. They're very desirous thoughts. They're like must have it now thoughts. And did you notice how many times I said the word thoughts? These are just that, thoughts. Thoughts running through your head, kind of like a ticker tape at the bottom of the stock exchange. They're just, they're coming. We have like 60,000 thoughts in a day. They just keep coming and swinging by and the ones that you have latched on to more often than not will be the ones that you constantly will see as the ticker tape goes by. So the problem is that if you give in to temptation, chances are you will be choosing a path that keeps you right where you are, no closer to your weight loss goals. So the more you resist, the more you're going to want it. Your primal brain is like a toddler who wants that cereal that's 99% sugar and filled with artificial dye. Have you ever noticed in the grocery store that all those bright colored cereals are all on the bottom so the kids can see them? (laughs) So the more you say no, the louder that toddler will get. Instead, you can calmly acknowledge that you hear your inner child and you see the cake, but you're not having it today. And here's the most important part. Tell yourself you can have it another day. It's always available and you can have it whenever you want. Once you give yourself permission to eat that tempting food, it is amazing how quickly your inner child will calm down. So typically when you try to avoid temptation, when you're losing weight, your first response will be to resist. Must not eat cake. 
you decide to white knuckle it and see how much willpower you actually have. So if you're at a party and you see other people eating cake and enjoying it, you're going to feel deprived most of the time. And you're going to have thoughts of like, must sacrifice. And willpower will only last for so long. And you may say, screw it. One piece won't hurt me. I deserve it. I've held out for at least two hours. And you may cave. The other problem you may have is, what if you were able to avoid the cake and you just kept thinking, okay, the party will be over in two hours. I can do this. I can resist. This is what I used to do. And it backfired on me because as soon as I would get home from the party, I would have such a super strong craving to eat dessert that I probably ate more at home than I would have if I had simply eaten the cake at the party. When you resist, it's almost like a boomerang. It's going to come back around. And usually it comes back around as a binge. What if you don't resist? What do you think will happen? So this is the, one of the best things I've discovered. When I used to resist and avoid temptation, my inner rebel, also known as my primal, primal brain, would come out. My inner rebel is so strong. It's like the defiant teenager who sneaks out the window to go to a party in the middle of the night. Crazy thing is, is if you don't resist, your inner rebel doesn't come out. Give yourself permission to eat the cake. And I actually take this to the opposite extreme. And I tell myself, not only can I have one piece of cake, but I can eat the whole cake if I choose to. <laughs> yeah, sounds crazy, but it works. Try it out and see what happens. But you have to believe it when you say it. So if you just are telling yourself you can eat the cake, but in the back of your brain, you're like, no, you can't. <laughs> you can't eat that. And that is exactly how I started off too, because I would tell myself this and I just didn't believe it. But the more I told myself it and the more, the closer I got to actually believing it, no, I actually believe it. So if you try to completely avoid temptation when losing weight, it will sabotage you. One of the most popular weight loss tips is getting the tempting food out of your house. And I think this might be helpful initially, but at some point you have to be able to be around tempting foods and have an indifference to eating them. I always joked that I needed to work in a bakery surrounded by cakes and donuts and cinnamon buns so I would get so sick of them and not want them. So initially, if you want to get them out of the house, go for it. But eventually, you want to feel in control when you're faced with those temptations those types of foods. So I say put all the tempting foods all up in your face. Everywhere you go, bring that tempting food with you. Tell yourself you can eat it. Tell yourself you can eat all of it. I bet if you ate your favorite food every day and at every meal for one week straight, you might not want it at all for a long, long time. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you to binge eat your way through your temptation. Rather, I'm suggesting that you get comfortable around it and be able to choose whether you really want to eat it or not. One of the other things I want to suggest is you get a divorce. No, not from your spouse, <laughs> but divorce your tempting food. Think of dealing with tempting food as a relationship. This relationship will not help you get to a smaller dress size. Initially, you may need to divorce yourself from the food. Avoid temptation. It's going to be uncomfortable at first. You will see each other when you are out and about. You may even see your former food partner hanging out with another person. <laughs> but eventually, you will get along and you will be able to be in the same room. You may even be able to have a civil conversation together. Or you may never talk to or even look at each other again. Either way, you will have an indifference to each other. That is my dream for all my clients. Being around your tempting foods and not wanting to eat them. Doesn't that sound awesome? And it's not even that you don't want to eat them. It's more of like having a choice of whether you want to eat that or not. It is possible, and I have gone through this myself. I have used this with clients as well. It's amazing how well this works. So realize your primal brain is running the show. You may always have the desire to eat a tempting food, but be aware that it's just your thoughts running around your head. Remember, like I said earlier, it's that ticker tape running through on the stock exchange. You will not die if you don't eat the chocolate cake. No one is holding a gun to your head and forcing you to eat the donuts. You always have a choice. So on a side note, you can work in sweets and tempting foods into your meals and still lose weight. But I love for my clients to get comfortable around tempting foods. And rather than feeling resistance and deprivation, 
to really be able to make a calm choice as to whether they want to eat those tempting foods or not. So here's the bottom line to successfully avoiding temptation when losing weight. Number one, give yourself permission to eat the tempting food. Number two, get used to having the tempting food around you and be able to choose it if you want to eat it. Number three, get a divorce and make peace with the tempting food. Number four, remember that the temptation is all in your thoughts. You will not die if you don't give in. In fact, it may help you get one more step closer to your weight loss goals. So I hope you found this podcast helpful. And if you are ready to dive in and really lose the extra 40 pounds or more that you're carrying around, I want to invite you to request a phone consult with me. And it's absolutely free. And on this call, we're going to find out what's really stopping you from getting what you say you want to get. You can request a phone consult at shapeitupfitness.com slash chat. Thanks so much for being here today and I will talk to you next week.